Hello, and welcome to this embryology video. In this short series, we are going to discuss the development of the head and neck. Some of the most distinctive features of the developing embryo are the pharyngeal arches. These structures lead to the formation of many vital features in the fetus. To start, we will look at a developing fish from a coronal section, as if we'd taken a knife and sliced horizontally up the length of the fish. Let's look at the head. Here we can see the gills supported by cartilage. Each gill is supplied by a branch of the aorta and a nerve. If we colour in the gaps between the gills to give a continuous wall, we are left with an illustration of the human embryo in the fifth week of development. The gills of the fish correspond to the five pharyngeal or branchial arches and the pharyngeal clefts are the bits in between. Although there are five pharyngeal arches, they are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6, with the fifth arch underdeveloped. A layer of ectoderm coats the outside, and a layer of endoderm coats the inside. Mesoderm is between. Each pharyngeal arch is again associated with a cartilage, an aortic arch and a cranial nerve. The mesenchyme also develops into different skeletal and muscular components, depending on the pharyngeal arch. For example, the mesenchyme from the first arch forms the maxillary, zygomatic, temporal and mandibular bones, and many muscles associated. The pharyngeal arches first appear at the end of the fourth week and develop through into the fifth week. Let's take a look at the cranial nerves associated with the pharyngeal arches. Let's go to a sagittal section to see this in more detail. Here we have the sagittal section of the embryo with the pharyngeal arches 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6. The first pharyngeal arch, also known as the mandibular arch, is supplied by the maxillary and mandibular divisions, that's V2 and 3, of the trigeminal nerve. The second pharyngeal arch, also known as the hyoid arch, is supplied by the facial nerve. The third pharyngeal arch is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. The fourth pharyngeal arch is supplied by the vagus nerve. And the sixth pharyngeal arch is also supplied by a branch of the vagus nerve, which loops down into what will become the thorax, and then back up again. This, of course, will become the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The mesenchyme from each arch forms the muscles associated with the cranial nerve supplying that particular arch. For example, the first pharyngeal arch is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Therefore, the muscles derived from it are the muscles of mastication. The second pharyngeal arch is supplied by the facial nerve. Therefore, the muscles derived from it are the muscles of facial expression. Associated skeletal structures are also derived from the relevant pharyngeal arch mesenchyme. Let's go back to the coronal plane and discuss the fate of the pharyngeal arches. There are five arches, four pouches internally and four clefts externally. Each pouch gives rise to an adult structure. The first pouch extends outwards to form the future auditory tube. The first cleft extends inwards to form the external auditory meatus. The epithelial lining of the second pouch differentiates to form the palatine tonsils. Lymphatic tissue enters these much later in development. The third pouch extends and bifurcates to form a dorsal and ventral wing. In the fifth week, the ventral region differentiates into thymus and the dorsal region forms an inferior parathyroid gland. Like the third pouch, the fourth also bifurcates into a dorsal and ventral wing. The dorsal region becomes the superior parathyroid gland, and the ventral region becomes the ultimobranchial slash ultimopharyngeal body, which forms the parafollicular cells of the thyroid. Some rearrangement then occurs as the inferior parathyroid gland moves below the superior one. The thymus moves down the neck to the thorax, and the thyroid we will discuss in another video. 
Any of these can fail, leaving, for example, an undescended parathyroid gland or accessory thymus tissue on the path of its descent. But what about the second to fourth pharyngeal clefts on the outside? Well, the second pharyngeal arch, also known as the hyoid arch as it goes on to form some of the hyoid bone, proliferates to overlap the third and fourth arches to merge with an area called the epicardial ridge lower down the neck. The remaining cavity is termed the cervical sinus and usually disappears as development continues. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.